film, and I'm so glad this is a full house. Uh, we showed it at the Ryerson the other night, and it completely floored everybody. It's been screening in the press and industry. We've had to turn people away because everybody wanted to see this movie, and with good reason. Peter Strickland is one of the most exciting contemporary filmmakers uh, working today. We've screened a number of his films in the past, including The Duke of Burgundy and the Bavarian Sound Studio. This film, I think, uh, is him at his most beguiling yet. I love living in this movie. You will live in this movie for the next two hours and will want to stay there and try everything on. So please, let's put your hands together for Peter Strickland! I can't really say it better than Peter, really. Um, just thank you for coming. Uh, we have Marianne, Jean-Baptiste coming afterwards to... Um, Answer any questions? We have Gwendolyn and Christy. Um, I'm in two minds about whether I should stay or. Um, I'm quite hungry, so I don't know. I'm also scared of your reaction. Um, really, um, it's a film about being bored at work, having trouble at home, and that need we all have to escape. And, put something on and maybe feel better about ourselves, maybe feel worse about ourselves. Um, so, yeah, um, let's take a look. <laughs> Enjoy. And joining them on stage, Mary and John Baptiste and Wendell and Christy. So that you you were being entirely entirely consumed by it, 
And I've always felt that polyester had the ability <laughs> to be malevolent. <laughs> and now I realize it goes beyond its potential to smell. Three questions for setting the film in, in, in the past of the 60s. Well, it's actually 1993, but I could have said it now. Um, the only reason for that was I enjoyed the enigmatic nature of Lonely Hearts adverts, which you wouldn't get now with Tinder. Um, so the idea of guessing how someone looks, that anticipation, which I think anticipation has gone from dating to some degree. Um, I suppose washing, te washing machine technology has, has come along with it. Yes, I thought we had that as well. Um, but what I like about those stores, I mean, they're all dying out now, but they always felt out of time. So I like, it's a very natural, anachronistic thing. Um, so to make it feel like the 70s, but it's actually set later on. Um, so yeah. The, the question regarding the writing process, because you have not a structure where there's sort of two stories that can converge at one point, and all, and the ghost of one story kind of lingers in the other one a bit. But um, what, what was the process in writing the structure of the story? Oh, uh, I actually don't know. I, it's it's quite it's quite important to not know. Um, I know the I don't know how it is in Canada. For I guess many of you know films as well. Um, but usually in, in the UK, you hand a treatment in and you write the script according to that treatment. I can't do that. I find it very difficult. Um, the, the joy of writing is to discover things, and and I write the treatment after. I read the script. Um, so really, it's very exciting to live in that world and it just takes you someplace you don't really expect. The, 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 set, the department store and the set and the production design, whether it was a, either a location you found or modeled after specifically? Um, well, it was modeled after a, a store in my hometown, Reading. And this is a fictitious Reading called Thames Valley on Thames. Um, a place called Jackson's, which bizarrely, um, well, I can pass on to you in a minute about that, but I, we missed the boat by six weeks. Um, it, the whole place was shut down and gutted, and that was it. We found, through the location manager, this, actually, it was really difficult. Most plant stores were in legal limbo or whatever, and we found a place called Orbis in Croydon. Um, but I had a very different idea of what I wanted, so I had to adapt accordingly. Um, but you've got to hear this story. Yeah, so my agent visited me on set while we were filming, and she watched some of the scenes that took place in the department store and said, this is really strange, but it reminds me of a department store where I grew up in Reading, Paul Jackson's. <laughs> and I said to her, well, Peter was, is from Reading, and it's based on Jackson's, so there we go. 